So, we continue our discussion on free vibration of a 2 degree of freedom system of course, without damping. Now, I think uh, I hope you remember that we mentioned that under certain very specific initial conditions a system may vibrate in a particular natural mode, where each and every member executes simple harmonic motion with same frequency. However, if the initial conditions are not chosen in that particular specific manner, then the general free vibration what results from an arbitrary initial disturbance can be expressed in terms of the not natural mode oscillations in the following way. X 1 t We also know that the ratio of the amplitudes in a particular mode they are determined from the analysis free vibration analysis. So, what actually remains to be done is the four unknown quantities, it is actually not like 6 as it appears to be, because I can always express in terms of x 2 as lambda 1 into x 2 1 and this will be lambda 2 into x 2 2. So, there will be actually only four unknown quantities that will be x 2 1, x 2 2, omega 1 2, uh, sorry phi 1 and phi 2. So, these four quantities can be determined from the initial conditions. So, let us solve a problem to demonstrate this. So, let us take a particular case of torsional oscillation. So, we call this most probably J 1 or J moment of inertia of this is J, this is 2 J and the torsional stiffness of this part of the shaft is capital K, same is the case with this one, they are two identical shafts. The displacements are denoted by two angular rotation one for this which we call theta 1 
one for this which we call theta. Now, the initial condition is such at the oscillation is started at t is equal to 0, theta 1 dot 0 equal to theta 2 dot 0 equal to theta 2 0, they are all 0. And only thing what we do, we keep everything as it is, only rotate this. That means theta 1 at 0 is say some angle. So, how we have started the vibration? We have kept, we have provided no velocity, we have kept this held in its original position theta 2 equal to 0, only twisted this by an amount psi and then release the whole thing to execute free oscillation. So, therefore, we have to find out theta 1 t theta 2 t and we know in general since it is done arbitrarily they will be composed of both the modes as shown here. Now, before we solve a free vibration problem it is obviously essential to find out the natural mode oscillation. So, first let us do that. Now, what will be the equations of motion? Now, the twist of this shaft is always theta 1 minus theta 2 and therefore, for the first mass if we ignore the mass of the shaft etcetera, so j into theta 1 2 dot plus that is the equation of motion of the first disc. <coughs> equation of motion of the second disc will be we can write like this j theta 1 2 dot plus k theta 1 minus k theta 2 equal to 0. So, it will be minus or k plus k 2 k these are the equations of motion. Now, since it is natural mode oscillation, we can assume that both are simple harmonic functions of time that means, I will write as and theta 2 Now, if we substitute these two in these two equations, what we will get? Minus omega square j theta 1 plus k theta 1 minus k theta 2 equal to 0. Omega t I can cancel and the second equation will give me minus omega square 
2 जी बेटा 2 or when we write these two equations properly, what we will get? We will get A minus omega square J and the second equation Now, obviously, the solution will be possible for theta 1 and theta 2 of the state of homogeneous equation if the determinant is 0. So, the characteristic solution is possible if And this when we will give us and its solution will give us the two natural frequencies. What are those two natural frequencies for this system? So, it will be 2 k square minus 4 or omega square whole square into 2 k square and 4 a j omega square plus and so omega 1 and omega n 2 square will be So, therefore, the two roots will become omega 1 square will be a by j minus a square j square so will be 8 root 2 a by j 1 1 by and omega n 2 square will be equal to 1 plus. So, the two natural frequencies are determined. Now, the mode shape I have told you how to find out the mode shape, use any of the equation and substitute a frequency there and find out what happens. Say for example, let us take this. So, if we take that one, so we get theta 1 by theta 2 for first mode equal to k by k minus omega n 1 square j and the 
for the second mode which we call as lambda 1 which we call as lambda 2 how much is this you can find out it is 1 by 1 minus omega n square into j by k will be 1 minus 1 by root 2. So, this is simple and in this case it will be 1 by 1 minus omega n 2 square into j by k that will be 1 plus So, the mode shapes are also determined. So, once the mode shapes and the, the natural frequencies are determined, we can now use this expression or this type of representation for our ultimate final result. So, in place of x, let us replace this by theta. Now, it is the actual vibration not normal mode oscillation. So, this theta 1 we should not confuse with the solution of theta 1 what we are doing and the amplitude star theta 1. Similarly, here also We have used this so now what we can do we can write this as theta 1 1 is nothing but lambda 1 into theta 2 1 and theta 1 2 is nothing but lambda 2 into. Now, both this lambda and omega they are all known. Now, what we do? We use this initial condition. We find out theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot and at t is equal to 0, we find out we substitute both as 0, then theta 2 also at t is equal to 0 is 0 and theta 1 at 0 is equal to star. So, therefore, using all these we get what we get? We will get phi 1 is equal to phi 2 equal to 0 theta 2 1 is equal to psi by 2 root 2 and theta 2 2 equal to minus psi and using these in this expression we will get theta 1 t is equal to
this is the complete solution now. So, therefore, we can solve the free vibration problem of a 2 degree of freedom system for an arbitrary initial condition. The procedure is first we solve for the natural mode vibration, determine the mode shape and the corresponding natural frequencies, then use the general expression in terms of the two natural modes, then using the initial conditions we find out the final thing. Next it is important for us to solve the force vibration problem of a 2 degree of freedom system. Why we are doing it? Because it is not only for the sake of completeness of the analysis of 2 degree freedom system, but the force vibration of 2 degree freedom system has some very important practical application in engineering. So, the force vibration of a 2 degree freedom system we now take up and we solve a particular system, though there is uh, no problem in handling a case, but we will involve ourselves primarily with this system as it has a considerable amount of practical application. So, our system is quite simple, this is k 1 m 1 and then this k 2 m 2 system is again connected with m 1 and there is a simple harmonic force applied to this mass m 1, what will be the solution. Now, one thing we should all the time remember that in the steady state solution of a force vibration problem, even though there is no uh, actual damping associated, but in nature everything ultimately gets damped. So, in the steady state we will have solution of the system in a way, so that everything vibrates with the same frequency. So, therefore, we can always assume the steady state solution of a force vibration problem as again another simple harmonic function of time with the same frequency. The free body diagrams if we want to draw. In this direction, the stretch of the spring here is x2 minus x1. So, it will be k2 into x2 minus x1 acting in this direction. Externally applied force is this, and of course, the spring tension is this. On this, of course, the force is simply equal and opposite of this thing. So, the equation of motion in this direction it is m 1 x 1 2 dot must be equal to total force in this direction that is f 0 and of course, there is one opposite force which is minus 1 and for mass 2, total force in that direction is minus Now, let the steady state solution be
x1 is equal to x1 the matter of the phase because you know when there is no separate damping the phase difference between various bodies can be either they can be in same phase or in opposite phase. So, that matter is taken care of by the signs of x 1 and x 2. If x 1 and x 2 are of same sign then this x 1 and x 2 will be in phase. If they are of opposite sign they will be 180 degree opposite in phase. Now, substituting these in these two equations of motion what do we get? and then reorganize. So, this will become minus omega square capital X 1 and cosine omega t term everywhere will ultimately get cancelled. So, we can write directly like this that k 1 plus k 2 minus m 1 omega square X 1 minus and the second equation will become So, therefore, there are two equations and only two unknowns capital X 1 and capital X 2, because you know in all force vibration problems our objective is to find out the magnitude of vibration, frequency is already known which is equal to the forcing frequency. In free vibration our primary objective is to find out the frequency and the amplitude depends on the initial disturbance given. To solve it let us express X 2 in terms of x 1, so x 2 is equal to substituting this in the equation in this equation. So, we get x 1 as equal to f 0 into k 2 minus and using this x 2 will become if we multiply this quantity by this Now, here one thing is very clear both x 1 and x 2 become infinite when the denominator becomes 0. Now, denominator becoming 0 that is
the solution of this equation will lead to two values of omega. Now remember this omega is not the forcing frequency, I am saying at which frequencies this becomes 0. So obviously this will give to two frequencies, one will be the first natural frequency, other will be the second natural frequency. So therefore, these are this will be 0 when the exciting frequency omega matches one of the two natural frequencies of this system when it is allowed to vibrate freely and the solution to this omega n1 and omega n2 can be found out from this characteristic equation which is also the characteristic equation we can find that for a free vibration problem f0 is 0 and so the two equations which you get here both are homogeneous and their solution will exist only when the determinant is 0 which is again nothing but this equation. If we plot <coughs> So let this be omega n1, this be omega n2, this be 0 and the vertical axis we will have two, one is x1, the other is Now, when omega is 0, x1 is equal to this is 0. So, simply omega is 0 up will be f0 into k2 and the bottom it will be k1 into k2, k2 square will get cancelled. So, only k1 into k2. So, the total thing will be f0 by k1. So it starts with f0 by q1. Then it increases as this tends to omega tends to omega n1, this denominator tends to 0. So So, as omega tends to omega n1, this tends to flow. Then, when it crosses, when omega crosses omega n1, then it starts, it becomes negative. and again it becomes smaller and it becomes 0 when omega is equal to square root of k2 by n. And then again it becomes positive and, and when it omega crosses omega n2 and so that So, this is the nature of function x1 when you plot against omega. If we plot x2, what we get? When omega is 0, obviously this is 0, this is 0, k2 square get cancelled, it was k1 by k2, so it starts from the same, but it becomes again it blows up, but when this crosses 0 then you will find that it can be shown like this. So, this is the nature of variation of x 
and when at this position omega is equal to square root of k bar omega square is equal to k2 by m2 if omega square is equal to k2 by m2 this term is 0. So, x2 and that condition will be minus f0 by here it will be f0 by k2. So, this much it will be minus f0 by Now, the important thing what to notice is that for a particular situation when exciting frequency is equal to square root of k2 by m2, then the primary this mass m1 stops vibrating. Since this stops vibrating, we can use this technique for stopping vibration in system by attaching an auxiliary mass and this is called vibration absorber. In vibration absorber, this is the primary system, our system which is the real system. And it is being subjected to a simple harmonic excitation. and we want to stop this vibration because it is obviously going to vibrate. So, the technique is then to attach a separate system which we call the absorber system. And obviously, the absorber vibration is called by a k. So, the same equations apply our amplitude of vibration x under this condition will be f 0 into a, a minus m omega square So, this is the amplitude of the primary mass oscillation and this is the amplitude of the absorber mass oscillation. Now, since our objective is to absorb or uh, stop the vibration, we should always tune it in such a manner so far as vibration absorbers are concerned that the exciting frequency square is equal to A by M A from there because under that condition this will be 0, this primary mass will stop vibrating. And also generally since the vibration of a system is more problematic when it resonates. So, therefore, the we have to be careful about those situations where omega is equal to the natural frequency of the primary system. So, therefore, generally the 
tuning is done in this manner that natural frequency of the system and this is equal to also the natural frequency of the absorber system omega should match it. So, then we will get the best result that if such a vibration vibrating force is there and the system is trying to resonate then we attach an absorber mass and the vibration stops. Now, why it stops can be easily seen. What happens when force is equal to or the omega is equal to square root of k by m. So, when omega is equal to what we find is x equal to 0. How much is x? Now, a by m a is equal to omega. So, so this becomes 0, so this goes. So, x a is nothing but f 0 by k a with a minus sign. So, now what will be happening if this is the auxiliary system and this is the main system, then the force which is acting here it will be simply k a into x a. And of course, there is another force here which is x a. Now, how much is this under this tune condition minus a. So, at every instant of course, when you multiply by cosine omega t both places. So, what happens? This primary mass is subjected to two forces. One is f 0 cosine omega t, the other is minus f 0 cosine omega t. So, therefore, the sum total of the force acting on the primary mass is always 0 at every instant. So, the every time the force which is acting here is neutralized by the spring force attached due to the vibration of the auxiliary system. So, thus we find that the vibration of the primary mass stops at this situation only because free vibration of the auxiliary mass it produces a force on the primary mass at every instant which is equal and opposite to the externally applied force. So, actually a better term would have been vibration neutralizer because it really neutralizes the forcing uh, or the forcing action. However, uh, since uh, the vibration stops people generally have always called it as vibration absorber, but there is no dissipation of energy as you can see in this whole thing. Now, for so therefore, designing vibration absorber is a very important thing. So, the, when we want to design a vibration observer, the conditions will be primarily that A A by M A will be equal to omega, which is known and which is generally omega n of this primary system. Then, we have to also 
careful about it must be less than equal to provided state. or called the rattle state. So, if everything vibrates, the total amount of space it occupies, it will be on both sides of the neutral position by an amount x a. So, the total rattle space is always twice x a. So, x a should be less than equal to half the rattle space provided in this system, it cannot be anything. So, therefore, these are the two very important conditions. Another important condition is that what we find here that if we operate exactly at that frequency, fine no problem x 1 is 0, but always you know in our real system the exciting force may fluctuate in its frequency. If it happens that okay, rather than that we are operating here, then you find that your amplitude will be this much, which otherwise perhaps would have been much less that means even without the absorber if the force acts sometimes it may happen that the amplitude of the system is less than what you will have with the vibration observer, because now this one natural frequency is split into two and you are going very near to another one. So, therefore, it is important that it does not happen. We would like to have as much separation or spreading out of the natural frequency as possible, so that even if there is some fluctuation of the force in frequency, the chance of it going to one of the natural frequencies which result in after the absorber is attached, then you know there will be the, the problem. So, therefore, the other condition will be that omega n 2, the two natural frequencies emerge only because we have attached the absorber system, otherwise it was a single degree freedom system. That should be more than equal to some minimum state. Thus, the three points you have to keep in mind while designing a vibration absorber. One is that its natural frequency of the absorber system should be exactly equal to the forcing frequency, which normally is near the natural frequency of the system. The rattling space tells you what can be the maximum value of the amplitude of the uh, absorber mass. And what minimum spreading is required between the two natural frequencies of the resultant system to avoid a large oscillation in case of fluctuation in the exciting frequency. These three conditions now this depends on as you can show on a quantity which we call mu which is the ratio between the to market, which you can easily show. The characteristic equation to find out uh, this characteristic equation we can solve like this. So, this equation becomes omega to the power 4 minus If we expand, this will be the equation. Now, we can divide the whole thing by omega n to the power 4. So, we can write now if we take k a by m a common. Now, remember k a by m a is equal to k by m 
so they are actually nothing but 2 into k a by m a, take k a by m a common which is omega n a square and if we divide by omega n to the power 4, then below we get 1 omega n a square. So, therefore, we will have this 1 and this all 1 2 plus if we divide this by k a by m a, what we will get is m a by m which is nothing but mu and this will be and k a by m a and k a by m are both equal to omega n a square. So, this whole thing is nothing but omega n n a to the power 4 and when we divide by omega n a to the power 4 this becomes and let us call this to be that means by some parameters take chi. So, this equation is chi to the power 4 minus i square plus 1 equal to 0. So, it will lead to 2 root r say chi 1 square and chi 2. So, we know in a quadratic equation the sum of the 2 root equal to minus b that is 2 plus mu and the product of the two roots is equal to c by a 1. So, therefore, you can write chi 1 into chi 2 is also equal to 1, not minus 1 obviously, because chi 1 and chi 2 are both positive. Ones. So, now if we add chi 1 square, chi 2 square and we multiply this by 2, so it becomes 2 chi 1 chi 2. So, what we can do? We can add 2 chi 1 into chi 2. So, this is equal to how much? This is equal to 2 plus mu and this is equal to 1 so into 2 plus 2 which is 4 plus and this whole thing is nothing but again chi 1 plus chi 2 whole square. So, chi 1 plus chi 2 is equal to square root of 4 plus mu and chi 1 this tells us that chi 2 is equal to 1 by chi 1. If we use this here, we will get chi 1 square minus 4 plus mu chi 1 plus 1 equal to 0. And solving this, we get chi 1 is equal to So, that is equal to half similarly you can show that chi 2 is half so chi 1, uh, so this omega n 2 minus omega n 1 divided by omega omega n of the primary original system that is k by n. So, we will find this will be equal to this minus this. 
into and so therefore the two natural frequency speaking this gap is given by all this can be k square root of k by m this is a known quantity which is same as omega is equal to omega a omega n a so what it depends on this mass ratio so therefore for a given primary system what will be the mass of the auxiliary what will be the thickness of the auxiliary all those these are the two things which you have to find out satisfying this condition maybe solving one example we clarify the whole thing we will try to solve one problem to demonstrate that how designer the vibration of your work are designed. Mm -hmm.